Welcome to the Trop, the summer home of the Tampa Bay Rays. It's the winter home of the St. Petersburg Bowl. This matchup is quarterback heavy. Mississippi State's Nick Fitzgerald led the SEC in total offense. And all Gus Ragland has done since returning to Miami's lineup is not lose a game and not throw a pick. Did I mention we would have cowbells? Oh, yeah, we have cowbells. We have Miami and Mississippi State right now. Welcome to the St. Petersburg Bowl as part of Capital One Bowl Mania. Inside Tropicana Field, this matchup features from the MAC, the Miami Red Hawks, and from the Southeastern Conference, the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. And in style, let's bring down the game ball, shall we, in an unusual way. Hey, you got a dome, you might as well use the repellers, right? It works out perfectly. For the former UMass star, Rini Angolia, I'm Dave Lamont. Chris Doring is with us, and we'll hear from Chris in a moment. We talk about this being a quarterback-heavy matchup, and it really is. Nick Fitzgerald leads this Bulldog team coming off an incredible performance in the Egg Bowl. Yeah, Nick Fitzgerald, a true dual-threat quarterback, but make no mistake about it, he will hurt you with his feet first and foremost. A dynamic athlete, six for five, 230 pounds, a big quarterback, but can run the ball, has excellent speed, great vision. As you said last time out against Ole Miss, his arch rival in the eight ball, 258 yards rushing. But what I love about Fitzgerald is that size. He can lower his shoulder, pick up those extra yards, a tough competitor. Miami's got to play really well today to shut down Nick Fitzgerald. Now, the Red Hawks have done something that's never been done before in college football history. They've gone from 0-6 to 6-6 and -6 in this bowl eligibility, and everything changed when Gus Ragland came back from injury. Yeah, hurt that ACL in the springtime, comes back game seven, leads them to a 6-0 record and a bowl game, 15 touchdowns against no interceptions. That's protecting the football if you're Gus Ragland. He needs to do that again today against his SEC team. Now, one player he's not going to have to worry about for Mississippi State comes from the defensive line. For more on that, let's go to the former Florida Gator, Chris Doring. Yeah, that's exactly right. One of the perceived advantages for Mississippi State heading into the St. Petersburg Bowl was supposed to be that of the line of scrimmage. Well, that advantage was mitigated last week with Dan Mullen's announcement that A.J. Jefferson, the disruptive defensive end, would not play after undergoing surgery to repair a partially torn rotator cuff. Now, he suffered that injury in the fifth game of the season, but gutted it out through the last half of the year probably could have played today but that decision was made between he and Dan Mullen to undergo the surgery now in an effort to give him a jump on the rehab in preparation for the upcoming NFL draft De defensive coordinator Peter Sermon is tasked with trying to replace that productivity today look for freshman defensive end Fletcher Adams to step into that void guys all right Chris thank you very much we're indoors artificial surfaces a baseball field of course home of the Rays and so we'll see how the seams and all that we'll talk more about that with Chris and Reedy uh, throughout the day and we see AJ Jefferson as, as Chris just reported and a lot of talk this postseason about guys skipping bowl games to get ready for the NFL listen if you're injured it's a no-brainer you know you got a chance to play on Sundays you're injured you get back you, you heal you get healthy you know, you know we'll get into it I'm sure as this broadcast goes on I think a lot of us have problems with guys skipping these bowl games uh, when they're healthy kind of leaving their teams behind so Miami began the year with six consecutive losses, including two in Mid-American Conference play. And here they are. Mississippi State, five and seven. They got here because of an APR, second best in the nation at 971. Only North Texas was better. Cowboys are here. We're ready to go. Brad Ball about to kick it off. Spencer McGinnis and Maurice Thomas and Thomas Third team, all Mid-American Conference and kick returns. That's going to be him right there, scooping it up at the goal line. To the 15-20, and a little bit of room for the work. 35 down the sideline, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds by the kicker. Brad Wall hits him, and a great start for the Red Hawks and Gus Ragland. We mentioned how their season went. It did not start well for head coach Chuck Martin's team, Reedy. They got off to an awful start. Yeah, and I mean, turnover after turnover. Those first six game days, 14 turnovers, they were minus five in turnover ratios, lost a lot of close games, just couldn't get on the win column. And did defeat Ball State's Cardinals to go to six and six. And Gus Ragland steps out there with no picks in 178 attempts. I mean, which is incredible through the first team in FBS history to lose their first six, win their next six, make it to a bowl game. Out of Bowler High in Cincinnati, one of the real powerhouses in that great city from the 41 yard line. Alonzo Smith is the tailback. And they start with a flea flicker. 
They take the medium pass instead of a first down in the Mississippi State Territory. The catch made by Rokeem Williams, and that'll put the football inside the 50. How appropriate that's the first play of the game. We talked to Chuck Martin, head coach, last night, and he told us trick plays. Look for him. We're pulling them all out. Nice little traditional flea victor as Smith tosses it back to Ragland. Nice little corner route by Williams. First play of the game, first down for Miami. Nice start. They pick up 12. A lot of times you see that throw go deep. That time they went underneath and took the 12 yarder on the sideline. Kenny Young is the tailback now. Number three. And look for Miami to try to slow this game down. They're going to go out Young out in space. Has one block to beat. Can't get it done. No gain on the play. As you see the speed of the Mississippi State defense that time, DeAndre Ward, the former walk-on, number 28, with a stop. Let's get to our keys of the game to us. And it's brought to us by Franklin American Mortgage Company. Well, I mean, if you're Mississippi State, stay motivated, start motivated, stay motivated. We see a lot of times in these games, the bigger conference teams just don't have that motivation. And for Miami, limit the possessions of Mississippi State. How do you do that? Controlling the ball, getting first downs, and then on defense, tackle well in space. And you need to do that against Nick Fitzgerald. Now this is Smith, up the gut. He'll get to the 43-yard line for pickup of four. Sets up third down and six. Smith out of Riviera Beach, Florida, off on the east coast of the state. Not terribly far from where we are in St. Petersburg, run down by Jeffrey Simmons. Yeah, Dwyer High School is Alonzo Smith, and this is a big down and distance for this Miami team. Third and six, third and seven. You talked about it. You want to keep that Mississippi State offense off the field, and how do you do that? You pick up these first downs. These third downs are huge. Quick throw into traffic, and it's a first down. What a terrific throw by Ragland. That'll move the chains. The grab made by the tight end, Ryan Smith. Yeah, and it was a great throw. Ragland puts it right on him. Mississippi State defense trying to disguise it. They started in a cover two right before the snap. Rolled back into a cover three. The safety, Ryan Smith, just hooks up at the first down marker. Ragland puts it on him, and they convert for that first down. That's 152 passes without an interception. Oh, Matt Blunden, a 91 for the Virginia Wahoos. The only other college player to go 150 without an interception in a season. Did 224 attempts. Roll out now with Ragland. Going back the other way. Wide open down the 15 yard line. Down to the 10 inside there is Kenny Young at the 8 yard line. And they love running wheel routes to their running backs. That time, Kenny Young, number three, is going to take the play action. He just goes out down the left side, little wheel route. Throws a little under throw by Ragland, but he makes the completion, gets it to his running back Young, and they're first and goal. At the eight yard line, Miami has scored a touchdown in the opening drive in each of their last four games. They bring back Alonzo Smith to the tailback. Two receivers out to the right of Ragland. He heads in that direction, being chased, goes back the other way. Here's the same play. The tight end has it inside the five and down to the two goes Ryan Smith. So that's two times now, Rini. They've rolled left and thrown almost across the field. And that's what you do against fast, aggressive defenses uh, like Mississippi State and that SEC speed. They're flowing one way. You go misdirection the other way. That time, as you said, dragged Ryan Smith, the tight end, across the field. Looked like he was open, going to score. Mississippi State fast enough to get back there to make that tackle. Five for five start for Ragland, 53 yards. He had to get away from Jonathan Calvin, who was coming in from his blind side. Fake to Smith. He wants to go back to the middle, and he missed Smith completely. He faked to Alonzo Smith. Ryan Smith was open. It'll be third and goal. And one of the things Miami has done in this six-game winning stretch, Dave, that first six games with their own six, 18 trips to the red zone, only seven TDs. In the six-game winning streak, 19 trips to the red zone, 14 touchdowns. A difference from 39 to 74%. Much better efficiency in the red zone. We'll see if they can score here on third down. Eighth play of the drive. Six have been passes. And now the run-pass option. And the Bulldogs swallow it up a yard short of the goal line. All right. It's a bowl game. What do you do Go here? for it. I, I just think you're aggressive. I think Chuck Martin's aggressive. You're down inside the one-yard line. I think you go for it. 
And I think offensively minded enough, and eh, about the two, but a good fight now. You got it down to the one. I think you fight here, you come up with some of your good play calls, and you try to score a touchdown. That's me, but I'm not getting paid to coach, so looks like he's going to try to take the three. 50% on fourth downs this year. Listen, it's a wide open playbook right now. They can fake this, too. And Miami will take the points. So the Red Hawks go up with an impressive opening drive. They're stopped at the one-yard line, but it'll be a 3-0 lead coming up. The SEC leader in total offense, Nick Fitzgerald, and the Bulldogs offense. Nine play, 58-yard drive, four minutes, 53 seconds, and the Red Hawks are on the board first in the St. Petersburg Bowl, 3-0 over Mississippi State on an 18-yard field goal. They elected to take the safe route rather than go for it on fourth down and one. Now we're going to find out what the game from Starkville could do with the football for the first time. I just think they're going to need more points in this game. I thought Chuck Martin would go for it, but, you know, you look at the other side, he probably figures, I'm down there, I want something positive on this drive, let's take the three and see what we can do on defense. Brandon Holloway and Aston Shumpert, Aston Shumpert. Away to kick, Holloway number 10 is the dangerous kick returner. And he'll get it from the end of Mississippi State. And skip away. No, he won't. That's a good tackle in the open field of the 16-yard line. Mentioned tackling in space for Miami is a key. Even special teams, that counts. Well, Mississippi State opened up their season with a surprising loss to them anyway to South Alabama, the Jags bowl team this year. And the Bulldogs, 2-5, and five, began the season. But then Texas A&M lost when they were ranked fourth. They used the ground game in that one, and then the Egg Bowl, and Nick Fitzgerald had five total touchdowns in that game. And that Egg Bowl victory made it a very sweet month of prep for Nick Fitzgerald and the Bulldogs. He'll start with Brandon Holloway in the backfield. Fitzgerald has a good arm, and it's caught at the 37-yard line. Fred Ross, first-team All-SEC receiver with a grab. Tony Reed on the stop. Ross now catch number 69 on the year. Yeah, and Ross is his main target, his go-to guy. Just a nice little corner route. Zone defense, you see Nick Fitzgerald just kind of drop it in the bucket over the linebacker's head to Fred Ross. That's his 196th catch in his career. He's number 11 all-time in, in the SEC history. Fitzgerald, little screen pass flipper here. What a good catch! But Miami all over it. And that's going to be a loss of a yard or two. Holloway was stopped. The Red Hawks defense all read that extremely well. Austin Gearing, a former quarterback, provided the pressure. And I saw a catch by Holloway. Put that right hand up there, bring it in. And he's their speed guy. And that's what Dan Mall trying to do there. Just get him the ball in space. See if he can make someone miss. Good job by Miami to come up and make that tackle for the loss. Again, Fitzgerald, this time out in space one more time to the 40 to the 42 and breaking tackles down to the 44-45 yard line is Malik Deer, the sophomore from Jackson, Mississippi. His 22nd catch sets us up third down. And for the Bulldogs, they need to get to the 47-yard line, about three yards to go. And what that play does, Dave, it gets you to a really third down and a manageable distance, opens the playbook up wide open. You can run it or pass it here. We'll see if we get a little zone read for the first time out of Nick Fitzgerald. He is devastating at that. Eris Williams now, 27, who had a big game against Ole Miss also. And instead, it is Williams after a lot of movement. He won't get there. The middle of the line rises up for Miami. Williams is going to be almost two yards short. Matt Duffin, number 94, in there for Miami. Well, you know, Mississippi State sends the wide receiver around to try to, you know, loosen up that Miami defense. But, boy, they are going to be gap sound today. Those linebackers are not going to be beaten in the A and B gaps inside. They stepped up there and stuck that one to force Mississippi State to punt. That'll bring out Logan Cook, who's giving it a shot today after missing a few games with an injury. Jared Murphy is back deep. It's a pretty good-looking kick. Murphy with a fair catch at the 12-yard line. So not very good field position for the Red Hawks, but an emotional lift for sure in stealing the football back. The good defensive performance after giving up one first down.
A lot of check with me. That's what they call it when everybody lines up and everybody except for the offensive line looks over. Well, this offensive lineman have to hold for a long time. Alonzo Smith into the tailback. He stays in the block. Raglan throws. Caught 35-yard line. And the tight end Smith continues to fight for additional yardage. And they're going to have him out of bounds at around the 41, maybe even the 42. And give this offensive line credit for Miami because every time Gus Raglan has dropped back to throw today, they've protected him. I mean, really, Mississippi State has not gotten close to him whatsoever. And they're doing a nice job up front. And Ragland gets rid of the ball pretty quickly. He does. He's got a quick release. And he's a competitor. You know, he, he reads the field. He goes to where that open receiver is, and he delivers the ball. No hesitation. First recruit Chuck Martin brought in when he came to the Red Hawks. Spencer McGinnis is the tailback now. Here's going to be a handoff again. This has worked once before, sort of an end around with Maurice Thomas. And Thomas is 5'11", 176. And frankly, he looks smaller than that is a waterbug type player gets to the 40 yard line before Fletcher Adams brought him down. It's just a jet sweep. You put Thomas in motion, you time it up perfectly. He takes the hand off of Raglan, good blocking out in front, and they move the chains. And the thing I like right now about the Miami offense is they're really spreading it out, going sideline to sideline, working the middle of the field, really putting that Mississippi State defense on their heels. An 18 yard pickup that time for Thomas. He's had a couple of good carries. They send him off again, and this time it'll be Raglan keeping. He'll pick up two straight ahead. That time they actually send Jared Murphy in motion. Leo Lewis, the SEC Freshman Defensive Player of the Year, to the 44 on the stop. Yeah, Lewis read that one correctly. Came off his block inside to make that tackle on Raglan. Under two minutes in this opening quarter at the drop in St. Petersburg. 116 total yards for the Red Hawks, only 48 for Mississippi State. This is a, an ideal opening quarter if you're rooting for Miami. And really the only conservative thing they've done so far was kick that 18-yard field goal. Otherwise, they have opened up the playbook all the way to the back. Play action fake to Smith on the run. Raglan. And that will be Alex Zielinski, the reserve tight end, the redshirt freshman, number 84 on the grab. Cut out by Lewis, a pickup of five. So here's an interesting decision here. What I think is two down territory, Greeny. Third down and a couple. Well, I agree with you. You're in that tweener land. I don't think you're going to try a long field goal with your kicker. Hasn't been really that consistent from long range. So I do think you have two downs to pick it up. And you talk about Mississippi State this season. Really, their bugaboo's been their defense, giving up almost 461 yards a game, 110th in FBS, and just giving up too many yards. They were plus five in takeaways, and they had 24 sacks on the year. No turnovers in this game to the moment. Under a minute to go in this quarter. Third and short. Quickly throw. Long throw. Incomplete throw. Fourth down and two. Murphy was the intended target, but he was well covered that time. And that's a tough throw for Gus Raglan. You're at the far hash. You try to throw it out across the field and just overthrows it. Nick Dowd's longest field goal of the season is 38 yards. They are out of his range. And it's very clear that they're going to go for it here on fourth down and, and two. And, you know, with two downs to pick it up there, I'm almost surprised they didn't run it on third down to try to pick it up, knowing that you had the two downs. We'll see what they do here on fourth. 50% on fourth down on the year against a team that's been gashed 72% of the time on fourth down. Raglan on the delay. He'll have it. Every time something big happens, I, I can't help but look across the field at that Miami bench and how excited they are right now. They are ready to play. They're excited to be here in this bowl game. And again, Gus Raglan, you know, Coach Martin told us he's a crazy competitor. And he knew right then and there what he needed to pick up to keep that drive alive. And you just see him go in there with reckless abandon. Doesn't matter that he's a quarterback. He's going to pick that first down up. You know, not the biggest guy in the world, about six foot one, 210 pounds, but it doesn't he, matter. We need to pick it up. He's coming off a torn ACL yeah. this year, right. this calendar year in April. Now that's tough. Non-contact injury. They had two quarterbacks go down with non-contact injuries this year. Pitch out. This is Thomas. He's been effective. He gets bumped around a little bit there and picks up two to the 27-yard line. Lewis was hanging around there. Kevon Coleman also. And that will take us to the end of, of the, the first, first quarter. quarter. And Miami from the Mid-American Conference leading the SEC representative Mississippi State 3-0. And the Red Hawks have the football when we return. 
Welcome back to the St. Petersburg Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Mania here at Tropicana Field, a beautiful St. Petersburg. Along with Rini and Goli and Chris Doring, I'm Dave Lamont, and welcome to, well, for most of the country, is still Monday morning football. Actually, still is here on the East Coast as well. We have all sorts of games today. We've got three bowl games. Boston College of Maryland following us, and NC State and Vanderbilt following that. Miami with the football, second down and eight. They're in Mississippi State territory as they lead this game 3 0. We start the second quarter. Gus Ragland and the Red Hawks. Spencer McGinnis at the tailback. Ragland down the middle of the field. Catch made to the 10 yard line. Ball comes out. Fumbled. Mississippi State with the recovery. And the first turnover of the game. And the big break goes to the Bulldogs. The fumble recovered by Richie Brown. And it was Rope Team Williams who made the catch in the fumble. And he made a move common to the game, which we always call football moves. To me, he secured it, took two steps with the ball, then fumbled it. They'll look at it in review, I'm sure. But this fumble should stand, Dave. This should be Mississippi State football. So here's only the 10th play of the game for Mississippi State. They had the ball four minutes and 13 seconds in the opening quarter. And they run a delayed handoff to Deer. And he'll pick up three to the 20. He came in from the receiver slot position and carried the football. And, of course, that was one of the keys for Miami to, to limit the possessions of Mississippi State and to only let them run nine plays in the first quarter. Huh? You're hitting your key. This is Shumpert for the football. He gets hit after a one-yard pickup. What a solid tackle by Junior McMullen, third-team All-Mac linebacker. And that's going to be third down and looks like maybe five here, Randy. Read and recognize from that linebacker position. That's what Junior McMullen did right there. And I really like these linebackers for Miami, Dave. Three sophomores, Koenig, McMullen, and Montgomery. They're really solid in that linebacker position in the future for Miami. Empty backfield set. Watch for Fitzgerald. He may run here. He's going to hang middle of the field, and it's intercepted at the 33-yard line. Did he hang on? No, the ruling on the field is incomplete. The officials are right there saying that Brad Koenig did not hang on to the football. Nevertheless, it's going to be another turnover on downs by Mississippi State. Yeah, he should have caught it. Just kind of hits him, hits to the ground, and it falls incomplete. So the defense for Miami comes up big yet again. And we'll have Jared Murphy at the 35-yard line. And Mississippi State didn't have enough bodies on the field. Or are they running a little fake? You can't really fake it no. this deep. No, there's no way. So here's a good-looking punt. At the 34-yard line, Jared Murphy with a football. So an exchange. A turnover does not hurt Miami, and they still lead 3-0. In the meantime, Miami has the football. Raglan hanging in there. He'll dump it off on the outside to the 40-yard line. The catch made by Maurice Thomas. And for more on the Mississippi State quarterbacks, let's go to Chris Doring. Chris. Yeah, a lot of people talk about Dan Mullen helping these quarterbacks progress. But how about Brian Johnson, the quarterback coach? He played, actually, at Utah, was recruited by Dan Mullen when he was out there. He's in his third season in Starkville. Did a great job with Dak. They had their two highest single-season passing totals in Dak's junior and senior years. And he's also a great recruiter. Let's look forward to the progression that Fitzgerald will have under the final two years with Brian Johnson tutelage. No, there's a lot to look forward to, Chris. You're right about that. Fitzgerald, haven't seen him run the football very much yet in this game. Got to think that's going to change. We're going to see Ragland run it, though, and he's going to get a first down to the 45, to the 40 and 39 yard line. So it's Ragland, the running threat at the moment. And a first down, the tackle finally made by Coleman. That's a 21-yard gain. Well, Raglan says, I can do a little zone read, too. It's just not all Nick Fitzgerald. And I'll finish the runoff as well. Lower in the shoulder, taking on the DB for the extra yard. They downed him at the 40. I'm about to give it him one more yard there at the 39-yard line. But Miami really energetic so far in the early part of this game. Well, we talked about that motivation factor. Right now, I just don't see it on the Mississippi State sideline.
It's Ragland again. They fake the jet sweep, and Ragland disappears into the pile for a three-yard, four-yard pickup to the 36-yard line. Richie Brown had recovered the fumble. is in there on the stop, number 39. Well, when you're trying to handicap bowl games, yeah, good motivation is really important, in my mind, anyway. Well, how many times do we see it? You have a power conference team like the SEC playing a group of five, like a MAC, and they just... They're not motivated now. You know, I really thought Mississippi State would be motivated, but right now, through this first quarter, there's no doubt that Miami is the more motivated team. They fake the pitch. Raglan on the run. This is going to be young. He'll be pushed out of bounds short of the first down. Jerry Green chased him out. So it's going to be another situation here, Reeney, where we're looking at probable two-down territory. Third down here and two. Yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly here. Again, that tweener land just too far for them to kick in. You really don't want to punt it because, you know, the, the risk-reward really isn't good on, on a punt, what you're going to gain. So definitely two downs here to pick it up. Last time when they were in this situation, they decided to throw it on third down, ended up running it on fourth. We'll see what they do here. Only 25%. On third down. Now an empty set here for Ragland, who has certainly not been afraid to run the football. He'll keep it here on the zone read. Makes the read. Saw where the line was. Got the first down. Picks up five to the 27-yard line. And, and I love that play call when you go zone read with the receiver coming in motion on the jet sweep. That really holds the linebackers because they have to respect the outside run, that perimeter run, and it just it just holds them a second, Dave, enough where Ragland can then pull it out of the belly and take it up through that middle gap and pick up that first down. Great play call, good execution. Alonzo Smith is back into the tailback. He stands to the left of the quarterback on first down and 10. Raglan. Guns it down the middle. What a throw inside the 10 yard line. That's Gardner on the catch. First down and goal. Miami. Giles on the stop. Gardner, another Florida kid out of Fort Lauderdale. Just a little inside seam route. Gets inside of the defender. Good throw by Raglan. Puts it on him. And again, Miami's knocking on the door. First and goal. Second time they've been first and goal at the eight yard line. Last time they settled for an 18 yard field goal. Let's see how the play calling goes here. Five to snap it. Raglan looking to the end zone. He'll keep it. Tripped up a little bit. And he'll get to the five. Maybe they'll make him down to the six-yard line, actually. Brown's another stop for the Bulldogs defensively. Second and goal. And I love the fact up here in our booth, Dave, we are surrounded by both coaching staffs. We have Miami to our right, Mississippi State to our left. And I tell you, Miami, very vocal. Their coaches, they're yelling. They're seeing formations. They are into this game as well. Yeah, if any kind of funny language creeps it's over, us. it's not us, we promise. <laughs> it, that's how loud they are. We can hear them even with our headsets on and with a bunch of folks with cowbells directly in front of us. Empty set this time for Raglan on second and goal from the six. Got to snap it, down to one, and they do it. Raglan to the end zone, and Gardner snatches it, touchdown, Red Hawks! Find where your big receivers are. James Gardner, six foot four, goes up, high points it. Excellent job. Good throw by Gus Randall. Put it up high where your receiver can go up and get it. And that is exactly what James Gardner does. And Jamal Peters with the coverage, who's a big corner in and of himself. He's 6'2 as well. So really, it's a good matchup defensively. But I think the throw was superior. And Gardner just goes up and makes that catch. Well, I know everything about Miami except for a turnover. And that was on a drive where they actually had gotten into the red zone and fumbled the football. It's been superior except for that PAD. Mississippi State comes up on a block PAT, so it is 9 0 at Miami. But at the moment, the better team is from the MAC. It's the Red Hawks who have been the dominant squad so far, but a long way to go in this one. Not every bowl game can have a belly flop contest, but you can when you're in the St. Petersburg Bowl and you have the beach pass. And the man, the belly flop campion, Sam McCollum. Yeah, the one we saw wasn't even the winning belly no. flop, and that was pretty good. That guy was like the bronze medalist yeah. of the belly flop, I think. 
Yeah, not every bowl game can do that. I suppose you could do it at the uh, the Poinciana with the, oh. uh, some of the other ones, San yeah. Diego. Is look, McCollum, it's a, a Svelte 309. I'm yes. sure he's a good Valley flopper. <laughs> yes, an 8-66-yard drive in 454. Mississippi State has just 53 total yards. They've given up 205. And how about 29 plays for Miami to only 12 for Mississippi State? Just uh, a dominating performance thus far by Miami, but only leads it 9-0. Yeah, that's right. The PAT was blocked, and Holloway has some room to the 40, and he's hit hard at the 43-yard line. So that'll get him jacked up in Starkville. And we hear the cowbells and excellent field position right there. We'll see what they can do with it. Up the middle goes Fitzgerald on his own read. And you see the quickness that he is known for. And he takes a few hits yeah. on the way, but he gains seven. Yeah, big powerful runner and getting back to that last graphic. You can do anything defensively that Alabama does or did. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. Something to hang your hat on. But can they hang on here? Under two and a half minutes remaining. The Bulldogs had two timeouts. Miami won. Williams. And that'll be a first down to the 43-yard line. That'll stop the clock at the moment. 220 to go. And this is the pace and running style that I thought Mississippi State would start this game with. Really try to get it to Harris Williams and, and zone read it with Nick Fitzgerald and, and see if they can kind of win up front with this SEC line. Looking for the wheel route to Williams, and he makes a beautiful catch on a dime at the 20-yard line. Yeah, we both saw that from the booth, Dave, as Williams does the wheel route down the left side, and a beautiful throw by Nick Fitzgerald as he drops that in there over the linebacker, Brad Koenig, in coverage. So all of a sudden, Mississippi State has come alive. They're actually in the red zone. He was marked down to the 19-yard line. Fitzgerald fakes the keep. He'll throw to the end zone and incomplete. Broken up that time by DeAndre Daniels trying to get it to Gray. I don't think we have had a penalty yet, right? Uh, no, we've had the, the review. That's it. I mean, that's the only stoppage we've had. And Daniels there with the coverage a little hand jockey in, but I think a good no call by the officials. Mm -hmm. I agree. And remember, face guarding is, there's no such thing in college Correct. football. Correct. On okay. a Sunday, that's a penalty. It drives me bonkers when people say that. You can face guard as long as you don't contact the receiver. Fitzgerald, keep it all the way here, going off the left side of that line. He took a hit at the 17-yard line. It was Tony Reed who came up to finish him off. He had a lot of help underneath, but Reed number 14 just came flying in. Boy, he sure did. I mean, he's just sitting back there at the safety position. He's reading. Once he knows it's run for sure, he's coming like a heat-seeking missile to lay a lick on Nick, Nick Fitzgerald. Eight touchdowns in the last eight red zone trips for Mississippi State. Fitzgerald. The middle of the field, good looking throw. That'll be a first down inside the five, fighting for the additional yardage was Farad Green at the tight end. Boy, he sure did zip that. Nick Fitzgerald puts it on his big tight end, Farad Green, in the pocket, has some pressure in his face, still zips it in there nicely. Williams on the keeper. That zone read looked a little clumsy, but he gets down to the two-yard line, just a powerhouse. The sophomore from West Point, Mississippi. Well, he'll see that on the zone read. Every once in a while, the quarterback puts it in there. He wants to pull it out, but the back ends up taking it. So the exchange looks a little discombobulated. That's what happened there. Williams takes it, gets stopped. But plenty of time left for Mississippi State with two timeouts here. 32 seconds and counting. They actually reorganized everybody on the field. Fitzgerald. Reed all the way. Touchdown. Bulldogs are on the board. And that's what Nick Fitzgerald can do with his 6'5", 230-pound frame. He takes on DeAndre Montgomery, a linebacker from Miami who Fitzgerald actually bigger than. He's able to lower the shoulder, break that tackle, and get in the end zone. So Mississippi State. 64 yards, nine plays in two minutes and 53 seconds. Graves on for the PAT. Miami at that odd number nine because their PAT on their touchdown was blocked. That could be significant later on as Mississippi State flexes their muscles just a little bit on that drive. 
Our halftime score has Miami in front, 9-7. to seven. Stay tuned for the halftime report. Coming up with all of Chris Doring's good buddies, Adnan Burke, Danny Cannell, and Booger McFarland. Here with head coach Chuck Martin, you guys are up 9-7 at halftime. Could you have scripted a better start, in your opinion, based upon what you've seen today so far? Well, my dream last night, we were up 56-0 at half, so that would have been better. But, no, you're right. We'll, we'll definitely take our defense. Did a phenomenal job against a tremendous offense, and we moved the ball. Obviously, the one turn on the red zone hurt us, but we moved the ball effectively on offense. So, yeah, we're pretty pleased. What has Gus Raglan shown to you so far today? Uh, he's, a, he's a football player. He's not afraid, and he's competitor. He's, he's thrown some great passes. He's made some great runs. Without him, we're not moving the ball probably at all against these guys. What's the message to your team here in the second half in the locker room? Uh, just keep trying to play the game the right way. Play for one another. Keep competing. Keep trying to execute. When we've executed, we've actually done a pretty darn good job. Coach, good luck. Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Uh, Welcome back to the St. Petersburg Bowl, part of Capital One Bowl Mania at the Trop, home of the Tampa Bay Rays and home of of this very entertaining matchup between Miami's Red Hawks and the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. Indoors. With Rini Angolia and Chris Doring, I'm Dave Lamont. It's the first time in this Bulls history that, which began in 2010, we've had no penalties in the first half. And no complaining by this crew. Or by anybody. Yeah. I mean, the players, the coaches, the fans. I mean, it's yeah. perfect for everybody who's watching. And it's just, you know, it's unusual, to say the least. Well, and it's been a clean game. We haven't had any, you know, where the crowd's going nuts, where they thought there should have been a foul and there wasn't one called. And so, nope. uh, happy. And also for for being off for as long as these teams are off. No false starts. No, you know, some of the little yeah, penalties right. the that unforced. are yes. almost inevitable. Unforced errors, to use a tennis term, uh, that are going to happen when you don't play for a while. And that's a testament to both coaching staffs, getting their teams ready and disciplined football, and nice job by both of those staffs. So Mississippi State will get the ball back. Holloway, good kick returner. We'll watch this go for the touchback. It will be 25-yard line for Nick Fitzgerald, the SEC total offense leader, 3,530 yards. Yeah, and I think this is the uh, important series to start this uh, the half here for both teams. Let's check in and find out what Dan Mullen was thinking about when he uh, yeah, had a chance spoke to, to Chris Doring. Excuse me, I had a chance to talk to Coach Mullen coming out of the locker room. He was very frustrated with the mistakes from his team, particularly on the offensive side of the ball. Too many drops. We saw three or four of those drop balls that gave up opportunities there. And defensively, he likes where they are. They're only down two points, but they got to create a little bit more pressure, be a little more sound up front on the defensive line. All right, Chris, thank you very much. We'll find out now about this drive. So important, we think, in this game. Pass out in space. We saw this play work a little earlier in the game, and it's going to work again. That's Keith Mixon driven out of bounds, and a first down for the Bulldogs. Yeah, just a little wide receiver screen. Great blocking by number six, Donald Gray, and 82 for Rod Green, the tight end. That play only works if the receivers on the perimeter can block for their fellow team, and they did a nice job there to pick up a first down, first play of this second half. Fitzgerald keeps his time, hit as he throws, and the receiver was hit after the ball went over his head, though. The intended receiver there was Mixon. He got popped by Okafor, but I thought the pass was over Mixon's head. Yeah, I think it's a good no-call. That's on Nick Fitzgerald. Mixon was open early. He needs to deliver that ball a lot quicker, let Mixon catch it, turn it up. Might not be a big gain, three or four yards, but you got to throw it to him earlier. And we haven't seen Fitzgerald get hit in the pocket that much today. Neither quarterback, I believe, has been sacked. This time he'll hand it off. No, he'll keep it. That's how good he is. Williams could have gained about 20 yards. Fitzgerald ends up with about seven. Well, he really is a magician with the football. Painting with another hit. But a nice job of tackling in space by Miami. That's a run that a lot of times we see Nick Fitzgerald come out the other end on 40 or 50 yards later. Good job to hold him from getting that first down, but a manageable distance here at third and three for Mississippi State. And if you're just joining us, one of pregame keys was Miami's ability to tackle in space. It had to happen if they were going to pull the upset. Takes to Mixon. Wants to go deep down the field. Ross has to step on the man, and he drops it at the eight-yard line. 
He had a step on the defensive back, Daniels, that time. That battle continues. Another drop pass. And now you're fourth down, and you need three from the 47-yard line. And you can't throw the ball any better if you're Nick Fitzgerald. You couldn't have ran down there and placed it any better. On the outside, away from the defender, and that's a ball Fred Ross knows he needs to catch 10 out of 10 times, and he just flat drops it. And we've Third. seen a couple drops today. Number three, right there. That brings out the punt team. Logan Cook, he's back in punting for Mississippi State. Cook runs up and chips it. Took a lot off of this one. And a difficult catch made there nicely by Jared Murphy, but the 15-yard line where Gus Ragland will bring back the Miami offense. A key defensive stop for the Red Hawks defense. Statistically, this has been Miami's best quarter of the season. In the third quarter, they have outscored opponents 104 to 50. The opponent this time for the Southeastern Conference is Mississippi State, but Miami has led all the way in this one. The big difference here with that nine is a blocked PAT off of Miami's lone touchdown. In the meantime, Nick Fitzgerald, when he got belted, came up kind of staring at one of his fingers on his non-throwing hands. And Chris Doring is keeping an eye on that. We'll get an update uh, on that if we can from Chris. We also have a question or two for him. In the meantime, let's see what Miami does with their first possession of the third quarter. Raglan, middle of the field. Boy, it's a nice throw. The tight end has been a weapon. Ryan Smith, that'll be a 21-yard pickup to the 36-yard line. And just a seam route right down the middle of the field, and Raglan puts it on his big tight end. Fake the jet sweep. Raglan has one receiver open. He'll find another one who's open at the 44-yard line. That'll be an eight-yard pickup. The catch made by Rokeem Williams. Chris Goring, did you notice anything funny with Fitzgerald's hand there? Yeah, he's wiping away some blood from his left hand, his non-throwing hand. I don't think it's a big deal. It looks like one of the tips of his fingers may have gotten nipped a little bit, but shouldn't affect the way he throws the football here in the second half. All right, thank you, buddy. Appreciate that. Raglan throwing the football, by the way. Now it's 197 attempts without an interception. Yeah, pretty good. I like the way he quickly delivers sure the football. Does. That's that's going to help. Off the Miami timeout. And that's going to be into Mississippi State territory to the 45, running on the left side there. Alonzo Smith picks up a very impressive first down. Brandon Bryant brought him down. Yeah, nice burst from Alonzo Smith. Another young, skilled player on this Miami program, and the future looks bright for them. So he hits that hole, picks up the first down. Well, you mentioned the future. Gus Ragland's a redshirt sophomore. Smith is a redshirt sophomore. Kenny Young's a redshirt sophomore. We've seen a lot of Maurice Thomas. He's a sophomore. Um, Williams is a fifth-year player, but Jared Murphy is a receiver. is a redshirt junior. The tight end, Ryan Smith, is a junior. Ragland rolling right. Looking left. This worked in the first half. It's the tight end Smith again. He has been a big weapon. Out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Pushed out by Lewis. And that's going to be the 23. They mark the football and another Miami first down. Yeah, he sure has been a big weapon. And you can see what Miami's doing. They're going back against the grain a lot against this defense. Again, another drag by the tight end Smith away from the flow of the quarterback. The throw back, and they pick up the first down. Five catches, 66 yards for the junior out of River Forest, Illinois. And again, Raglan has not been sacked. Neither quarterback has been sacked. And Miami does have two great linemen on the right side, McCollum and Buchanan. Those are their, that's their, their big horses. Looking left, Raglan. He'll throw in that direction toward the end zone. It's going to be over everybody's head. Might have thrown that one away. You know, not only has Ragland not been sacked, Dave, I mean, he really hasn't even been pressured to throw it quicker. I mean, they're, they're just, he's comfortable in the pocket. You have to make quarterbacks, especially ones like Ragland that are so accurate that don't throw interceptions, you need to make him uncomfortable in the pocket. You don't necessarily have to sack him, but you got to get to him, you got to get some hits on him, and you got to make him move and throw the ball before he wants to a few times. Second down and 10.
Empty set here. Ragland has run the football fairly well today. This time throw all the way. Same play coming back for the ball and making the grab is Gardner. Down at the one, the three yard line, they're gonna say. And Jamal Peters, number two, is in coverage. He never turns around to locate the ball. It's the back shoulder pass by Ragland. And Gardner locates it, makes the catch, and it's first and goal. What a terrific throw that was. First down goal, Red Hawks. Gardner continues with the no interception streak. Empty set again. Now they bring around, fake the jet sweep motion. Ragland on the draw all the way, brought down short of the goal line. Second and goal from about the one. This opens up a myriad of options here. You could try the same thing. You could go with Smith and tailback. And they do bring in a jumbo package here for the Red Hawks. And that defense has to respect the perimeter for Miami because we've seen a bunch of jet sweeps today as well to kind of spread that defense out sideline to sideline. See the red zone. They've been perfect today. One of those a touchdown with the block PAT. That's why we're sitting at 9-7. Clock at 8-7-6. Now they've got some beef in there. Play action fake to Smith. To the middle. Touchdown, Ryan Smith! It's just a great play call. You bring in the big beef. You go a little play action pass, you slide the fullback into the flat, he's covered, but then your big tight end Ryan Smith just kind of slithers his way to the back of the end zone after blocking initially. Nice pitch and catch from Ragland to Smith and what an ending to that drive. That's how you finish off drives right there. Ryan Smith's fifth touchdown catch of the season. Now, this is a big PAT here. They don't go for two. The last one was blocked. This one is nailed. And Miami leads 16 to 7, 85 yards, eight plays, four minutes and 24 seconds. We talked about the importance of the opening drive. Mississippi State didn't score on theirs. Miami did. 8-11 remaining in this third quarter, 16 to 7. The Red Hawks over Mississippi State in a MAC SEC battle. And there is Gus Ragland. Look a little different than that headshot we have in him for our statistics. It's like the playoff beard right Yes, there. he looks like a hockey player who's growing it out for the playoffs. We'll see if he shaves after the bowl game. But he has now 201 passes this season without a pick. Remember, torn ACL, non-contact injury in April. Did not play through six games. Billy Ball did. He got hurt. They brought in Noah Wazenski, a freshman. Then Ragland was finally ready. There were some concerns from his folks. Is he going to be okay? Chuck Martin said, look, he's I'm okay. To, I'm ready to play him. I'm ready to play him. He's ready to play. Let's see what happens. Miami has not lost. 201, not just this season. That's his career as a college football player without a pick. Holloway. 15. If he gets wide, he's dangerous, but that's greatly cut. That's the second big special teams play today by Joshua Allen, number two. They tried the play that didn't work before with Nixon. This time it works, and it's going to be a first down all the way out to the make that deer, number 22. That's the first down to the 35. And I agree with Chris. I mean, as a former running back, when I fumbled, you wanted to get the ball back, and you wanted your coach to give you the ball. Give me the ball again. You want to make up for it. So I think, really, they should take a couple shots at Fred Ross, get him some catches, and get that confidence back. Take another shot at the big guy. Coming up on the seven-minute mark in this third quarter. This time it's going to be Williams, the bruising running back, gets to the 40-yard line. That's a solid five-yard pickup. JT Jones, second-team all-mac defensive Line number 91 in there on the stop. And let's see if Mississippi State picks the pace up a little bit like they did in that last possession of the first half, and it seems like they are. And they scored on that drive. Yes. That was a very successful drive for the Bulldogs. This will be Williams again. He'll be short of the first down. Miami is tackling really well. Williams is going to be a little bit short, and it's going to be third down and about a yard and a half to go. 
In the fact, they're going to make it a, only a yard to go. We got to the 44-yard line. Yeah, and this is the money down. Third down and short. You know, if you're offense, obviously, you got to convert this. And if you're a defense, would be a huge stop if you can get in here and, and force a punt or force the hand of Dan Mullen to try to go for it on fourth down. 44% for the Bulldogs so far on third. Make it 50%. They get to the 48-yard line straight ahead, but there is Williams. Jones with another stop. And, you know, and J.T. Jones makes the tackle, but that's what zone read does. It just puts him in a lurch. He's standing there. He doesn't know if Fitzgerald's going to pull it or not. He's kind of there on his heels. They give it to the back. He makes the tackle, but well after the first down. This is an interesting formation here for Mississippi State. A little cluster at the top of your screen. It's going to be Williams again. Nothing that time. Center of that defense holding strong. It'll be second and long. Junior McMullen, the middle linebacker, making the stop. And the one thing I can tell you on these zone reads, the offensive line in Mississippi State are not getting to that second level. They're not putting a hat on Junior McMullen. And if you don't get a hat on him, he's going to come up there and meet the back at the line of scrimmage like he did right there. They gave him a yard. It'll be second down and nine. We're now under five minutes, third quarter. Fitzgerald, quick throw, caught to the 45 to the 44, just a yard shy of the first down. Justin Johnson with his fifth catch on the season, and it'll be third down and a yard to go. Opens up Fitzgerald or Williams here. And this is where you'd like to see Mississippi State go real quick. He kind of got Miami on their heels, get up there and try to power it here for this first down. And they cluster three receivers off to the left side. This time, it's Fitzgerald. He's got speed, by the way. Down the sideline he goes. Touchdown, Bulldogs! And that's what Nick Fitzgerald can do. Zone read, run to perfection. Third and short, he pulls it out of the belly of his back, has the speed to get it to the perimeter, and you see for his 6'5", 230-pound frame, he does not get caught. Down the sideline, 44 yards later, he's in the end zone. Tony Reed had a couple of chances, high and low, but could not do anything about it. Fitzgerald, who had seven 100-yard rushing games, best in the SEC among quarterbacks, comes up with that one. Now. And it's back to a two-point game. 82 yards, nine plays, three minutes and 50 seconds. A lot of fun indoors in St. Petersburg. And it's right back to you, Miami. Well, and that's where you're just protecting a gap because that's where they're getting you on third and short. You saw the defensive end, JT Jones, step down. That's the read for Nick Fitzgerald. He gets it to the perimeter. Tony Reed kind of loses contain there and lets Fitzgerald get outside of him, and he doesn't have the speed to catch him. No, Fitzgerald can motor. And there'll be a touchback, and the Red Hawks will take over at the 25-yard line. Two, one, just in time. Raglan, pressure from the edge. Gardner fights and makes a great catch at midfield. And that's great recognition by Gus Raglan. Throw it up to your big six foot four receiver. Graham's on him, only five foot ten. He's got that six inch advantage. Watch him go up, high point it, put it up there, let your receiver go up 50 50 ball. He comes down with it. Right, you have to be impressed with Raglan's accuracy on these throws as well. Right at midfield, right at the logo of the St. Petersburg Bowl. Back to the ground. This is number three, Kenny Young. Young will go for three. Second down and seven. And that buys Miami so much more time to run off the clock. Yeah, I mean, if you're Miami, if you're Chuck Martin, you want to get into the fourth quarter with this lead and this drive continuing. Because, again, one of the things you wanted to do was limit possessions of Mississippi State. We saw the 44-yard touchdown run by Nick Fitzgerald, so we know how quick they can strike. Raglan with 200 yards in the air and 38 on the ground. He is actually Miami's leading rusher. Of course, he's had more attempts than anyone else, too. Sets up, throws right in the seam, and a big hit, and a first down. The catch made by Jared Murphy. 
He took a pop at the 26-yard line from Coleman, but it's done a first down for the Red Hawks. Yeah, and that zone in the secondary just too soft for Mississippi State as Murphy finds a hole in the middle, takes the big hit, but makes the catch. Holds on. They marked him down at the 27-yard line. We are under two minutes in this third quarter. A clean game, just one penalty. And that was an easy defensive holding call against the Bulldog. And there's the first sack of the game, delivered by Nick James, back at the 34-yard line, the senior from Long Beach, Mississippi. He was not fooled by all that motion before the snap. Yeah, and they just did not get to Gus Ragland in the first half. That time he just beats the young center, true freshman, Danny Godlewski right there to get to Raglan for the sack. But it's, it's also a sign you mentioned a true freshman at center yeah. is rare. And I should say, Godlewski has played great this year as yeah. a true freshman, making all the calls. He's going to be a real good one as his career progresses. This is part of the reason for Miami people to be optimistic about their future. Raglan with a handoff. This is going to be young fighting hard, but the Bulldogs fighting back. It's going to be maybe a yard or two there. Going to set up a third down and really long here. They're going to need about 15 to get a first down. But we're under a minute in the quarter. Chris? The state defense flying around a little bit more here, even though there's been somewhat of an inconsistent performance today. That's been the story of this Mississippi State season. One thing that defensive coordinator Peter Sermon has done, though, he simplified the scheme a little bit, allowing his guys to play faster, not having to think as much, not as many calls, not as many checks at the line of scrimmage, and they're playing a little bit better, especially young guys like Jeffrey Simmons and Leo, Lure, Leo Lure, Lewis. On the draw, Raglan will get to the 30-yard line. And that will be the final play of the quarter, most likely, unless somebody calls a timeout. And that's the best thing you can do when you have young athletes on defense, especially in the back end. You don't want them thinking too much. You want to simplify it and just let them react and be athletes back there. Mississippi State hasn't won a game this season in six tries when that trailing at the three quarters, but they only trail by two. Miami has a decision to make on fourth and long what to do. We'll find out what it is when we come back. You know, this could be a live shot. <laughs> it's so beautiful in the St. Pete area. And the folks who have come down from Ohio and from Mississippi have certainly enjoyed gorgeous weather and a great time. And now an excellent football game. We start the fourth quarter, part of our Capital One Bowl mania here, the St. Petersburg Bowl with Reedy and Goldia and Chris Doring. I'm Dave Lamont and our ESPN crew. And we thank you very much for starting your college football triple header and your football quadruple header because of the Monday nighter tonight yeah. with Detroit and Dallas. And Mullen, Chuck Martin. And Chuck Martin's decision on fourth down and 13 from the Mississippi State 30 is to bring out his quarterback, Gus Ragland. Yeah, I mean, you've had success with your receivers on some 50 50 balls. Your tight end has played excellent today. I just think you're, you're going to, the reward to punt it isn't that great. So I agree with this decision. Go for it. Empty backfield set. Off the back foot. Intercepted at the 10 yard line. Down to the 30 yard line on the return, which was the original line of scrimmage anyway. So it turned over. That's the first interception Ragland has thrown in his career. Jamoro Graham picked it up. And Graham playing that safety position kind of baited Ragland into it. His receiver runs a corner route. Looks like he's going to be open. But Graham playing center field breaks on the ball, goes up, makes that interception, and a nice return to boot. That was 204 consecutive passes for Ragland. All right, I'll be the one to say it. It's as good as a punt, yeah. or was it? It was, I think. You know, and you gave yourself a shot. Listen, they made a play. You're back at the original line of scrimmage, but all good things must come to an end. Finally, an interception for Gus Ragland. Now the Bulldogs trying to do something they haven't had done all day is take the lead and they start with a six yard run on this drive with Eris Williams, McMullen on the stop. Miami has led since the opening drive when they kicked an 18 yard field goal. 
And the odd part of the score here is that Miami had a PAT blocked. Fitzgerald threw a little bit low and behind Deer, who could not hang on. So it's going to be third down and four coming up. Yeah, that one's on Nick Fitzgerald. Not a good throw, and that's one where third and short boy really want to complete that, pick up that first down. Now it's second down and four, it was, but now third and four. Got to pick it up. 50% today for Mississippi State. Empty backfield set. And adds the element of Fitzgerald just taking off on the snap. Five to snap it. He does immediately, and he'll have a first down and plenty more. Don't forget, he's got great speed. He'll get all the way inside the 40-yard line. The ball came out. The helmet comes off, and a flag comes down. There's a lot that happened right there. Let's see if Fitzgerald's helmet was taken off by a defender. Yeah, and if it was taken off as a result of a penalty, Nick Fitzgerald does not have to leave the game. If it's not a penalty, Nick has to come out for one play, and we'll get the call here. Personal foul, 91, defense, unnecessary roughness. 15 yards, automatic, first down. And no announcement made about Fitzgerald in the helmet. Correct, because usually they make an announcement. They'll say number seven has to come off, and boy, who? Uh -oh. We might get another review on yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, you could get targeting. He's no longer a defenseless Number player. Number seven can stay in the game However, because his helmet came off due to a penalty. All right, there you go. There's the range. The ball to the 23 to the end zone. Wide open draft again. Another drop. This time by Ross. Second by him. I'm going back and trying to figure if Martin is just yelling at the referee, which is possible. Yeah, I'm not sure, but again, another drop by Fred Ross. Kind of missed time to jump. He was so wide open right there. And, and that's a ball they have to complete for a touchdown. But I'm with you. It looked like Chuck Martin was yelling at the Mississippi State side. Maybe not. But the referee I, I is know. close it's to correct. that side. It could be the referee. You're 100% yeah. right. He's close to that side. of. Uh, he's very close to the Mississippi State bench. Martin was lucky he didn't get a warning. Tunnel screen. This time it's caught by Ross. He's brought down very quickly at the 34-yard line. Tackling in space to be talked about. JT Jones from his defensive end position with the tackle. And it's third down and a long way to go for Mississippi State. They need 21. And of course their field goal kicker, Weston Graves, long of 48 yards. So Still need to pick up some more to get in his range as well. But remember, we're in a dome. Yeah. So the conditions couldn't be any easier for the kickers. Empty set. So Fitzgerald is a real running threat here. Miss, uh, Miami lining up only three. They rush just the three. Middle of the field. Caught 20 yard line. They'll be short of the first down. That's the catch made by Ross. Double teamed on the tackle by Reed and Kane. Now you can set out your field goal kicker with confidence. You're well within his range. Yeah, and I like the call. Listen, pick up the yardage that you can get underneath. Miami's going to give it to you. Just come up, make the tackle, not let you get that first down, and hold you to a field goal attempt. However, Graves is not on a hot streak. He has missed six of his last eight. His long of the year, 47 for the junior. One time walk on. Logan Cook. The putter is the holder. From 37 for the lead. And for the first time today, the Bulldogs have the advantage. The cowbells ring of the Bulldogs to celebrate while Miami sees over that targeting call. They'll get the ball back. It's got a little intense in here at the St. Petersburg Bowl. Might blow the roof off the drop. 17-16 Mississippi State in front for the first time at the 12-03 mark off the field goal by Weston Grave. This kickoff is ripped. Not going to be run back at all. Touchback. Now we'll see how Gus Raglan can come back. And Chris Doring talked about selective memory for wide receivers and dropping passes. Raglan just threw his first pick of his college career. Yeah. Now he's got to get over that. 
17 16 to go. 329, 17 16 to score. 329 remaining fourth quarter. Raglan leads them out. On the ground with Kenny Young. Young will get a first down. It looks like, I don't know, the spots have been weird today. Yeah, I gave it to him. All right. Adams on the stop, replacing A.J. Jefferson. We haven't talked about him since the beginning, but Jefferson not playing a key player defensively for Mississippi State. He opted to get his shoulder worked on and start to prepare for the next level. Under three minutes right now. Raglan in trouble. Escapes and just falls forward. Lift with his shoulder to the 35-yard line. Let's see where they mark him down. Probably a little bit shy of that. Now, field goal range for Nick Dow, we were told. Is about is a little under 40 yards. Yeah. So you got to work your way down to about the 21 yard line yeah. to be uncomfortable. Yeah, and, you know, I think in a game game winning situation, they probably give them a little more leeway to see if he can make it in this zone. But now this Miami team that's really taking their time all game, I think really speed it up just a little bit here. Little pressure off the edge, right up the gut goes Young, 45, 50 yard line. Right up the middle, tackled by Bryant. And now you slow it back down, because <laughs> you're at the 50. Listen, good blocking up front. I love the quickness and the speed of Kenny Young, just right up the A-gap. Great blocking in the middle of that line. Got Levski, McCollum, Diamond. And boy, Young hits it quickly. Clock running to 150. They barely stopped it for the first down. Miami, two timeouts. Mississippi State, all three of theirs. Thomas in motion. They stick to Young, who's the hot back, and he's motoring through to the 42-yard line. Got to think that, though, can they keep running the football this successfully? Lewis on the stop, the clock now at 122, and still running. And does Mississippi State ever call the timeout? Well, yeah, you have to for Dan Mullen. And right now, that Miami offensive line is mauling the D-line of Mississippi State, just ripping off eight, nine, ten-yard runs right up the middle at them. But Miami is in no rush here. We're coming up on one minute by the time this ball is going to be snapped. They stay to the ground, trying to get the first down is Alonzo Smith. He's right at the mark. But I'm with you, Dave. If I'm Mississippi State, I start you. I got three timeouts. I start using them. You can't take them back to Starkville with you. They're not stopping the clock when they're signaling first downs, or if they are, they're stopping it for about a, a breath. They're really motoring this clock here. Coming up to 40 seconds. Miami might need to call a timeout here. They're not in field goal range. Not even close. Raglan. Open. Now they're in field goal range. Gardner almost broke free to the 16-yard line. And still no one's taking a timeout. So this clock's going to be running here right now. It's the, going. Boy, the referee does not mess no. around. 19 seconds. And now we're going to get a clock stoppage with 16 seconds to go. Gardner, once again, finds Miami. himself wide open down the left sideline. Raglan puts it on him. You're not going anywhere, right? 16 <laughs> seconds remaining. You got to sit this one out and see how we finish this baby up. First down for Miami. Trailing by one. That block PAT, so big in this game. 20 seconds remaining. They've got a timeout. Mississippi State has all of theirs. But right now, Miami has all the cards. Are they setting it up for Nick Dow to come on and try to win? They are in his range. His longest field goal of the year, 38. So what's the play call here, Reini? Are well, you conservative? It looks like to me they have a bunch crew, a tight set. They're at the left hash. I think they probably want to get the ball in the middle of the field or wherever their field goal kicker feels comfortable. So I got a feeling Russ, the Gun Bradley might just keep this ball, get it to the middle of the field and go down. Don't risk a handoff. Just set it up where your field goal kicker wants it. Raglan's going to roll to the right. That's where they want it. And the 
Clock is stopped with 14 seconds remaining. Timeout. Mississippi State. Mississippi it is State their first. uses a timeout. It will be 30 seconds. You got to go to your field goal kicker, and you know what hash or the middle of the field. What is he more comfortable? Some kickers prefer it on a hash. And right. He preferred it on the left half. He would he would left hash. Excuse me. Clock he would just leave it there. He wanted would you please the reset That's the game exactly clock to 16 Nick seconds. Nick down to an 18-yard field goal. They also had an seconds, opportunity please. for a PAT earlier in our game in the first half, and it did not go well. And it was penetration right up the middle between the guard center that got through there to make that block. So you have to protect on PAT field goal from the inside out. If you let him get through that A-gap, he's gonna block it every time. Jonathan Calvin was the man who blocked that PAT. Also great penetration from 34, Corey Thomas. Now, it's second down. You can't go back too much farther because you're gonna be really at the <laughs> edges of down range. I think you gotta do something a little more honest here forward Understanding that Mississippi State's going to stretch this out as long as they can. Yeah, I mean, I think they'll sneak it. But, boy, wouldn't you love to see a tight end slide down the seam and then throw it? He actually backed up another yard or two to the 20. They are on the absolute fringe of Nick Dowd's Time range up. right now. Mississippi State, it is their second. It will be 30 seconds. But you're right. They've gone backwards, and we should tell the viewers, we always find out what the yard line is that the coaches feel comfortable getting to for their field goal kicker. And for Nick Dowd, it was the 21 yard line. Well, they've now backed up to the 20. Yeah, I, you know, I think Mississippi State takes this one here to us, and they are gonna try to kick it here on third down. All right. 37 yards for the lead. They die, Carson, he blocks! They've done it again, Mississippi State's special teams have come through! And Dave, it was blocked through that A-gap once again. It went between the center guard, I believe it was number 94, Nelson Adams, who might have got a hand up, possibly 34, Corey Thomas. And again, when you get penetration up the middle like that, I don't care how high you can kick the ball as a kicker, it's going to get blocked. And you just saw it right there. Great penetration. And it gets blocked once again. Yeah, Calvin had got in there. It was not Calvin who hit it, number 16. So remember, it's a three-phase football game. Offense, defense, and special teams. And it's special teams that win it for Mississippi State with two blocked kicks. Their first blocked field goal in over a year. And the Bulldogs will take a knee and hang on for their sixth win of the year. These teams will finish six and seven. Breaking Miami's win streak at six. And the first team in history to go 0 and six to six and six, they'll finish six and seven. Crazy finish. And you wonder about backing up. Did that make it tougher for Dowd? Well, we'll I think, never know. I, I think it probably did. Yeah. And let's go down to the field. Chris Doring has got Dan Mullen. Hey, thanks, Dave. I got Dan Mullen here with me, winning coach here in the St. Petersburg Bowl. What'd you tell your team prior to that block? Well, I told them about three plays earlier. I said, we're fine. We're going to block the kick. We blocked the extra point earlier. We'll block another one. We just, and, you know, we just wanted to put some pressure on them. Uh, I think using the timeouts there, kind of just, they thought they'd run it down for one play. Uh, but we made the play when we needed to at the end. We missed a lot of them today. But we made the one big play we needed to there at the end. Not the cleanest game, as you mentioned, but talk about Nick Fitzgerald. Big day on the ground again. Well, obviously developing into one of the best quarterba uh, quarterbacks in the conference. Well, I don't know. We'll see. He's got a lot of work to do this offseason. No, he's really improved uh, a lot. Um, 
you know, I'm really happy with the, where he's come from the first game to last. But as you know, all players right now, he's going in the offseason right now as the starting quarterback. Uh, this is where you make a huge jump, sophomore to junior year. You know what to expect next year. He's got to grow as a leader. He's got to grow as a passer, as a runner, managing situations, everything. But he has that potential, and we're going to make sure he works to get it out of him. Coach, congratulations. Go enjoy it with your team. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, Chris, we're going to send some lozenges down to Dan. He might need them. What a finish. We want to thank all of you for watching. Hope you certainly enjoyed this one. Thank you, Rini and Chris and our crew, Paul and Dave, for their help as well. 17-16, our final score at a very exciting St. Petersburg Bowl. We got more football coming up, but you know what? It wouldn't be right if we didn't check in with Adnan and Danny and Booger and find out what they thought of this game. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to send it off to the studio. Hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year from St. Petersburg. An exciting bowl game came down to the very last moments and a blocked kick, one of two blocked kicks by Mississippi State leads them to victory. Now let's send it to the studio. Gentlemen, it's all yours.